Here's Brody Brazil. I wanted to make this recording with my best advice for aspiring sports broadcasters. Now, the idea behind this is that I recently spoke to a sports journalism class at San Jose State where I went to college more than 20 years ago, and the students had tremendous questions. I tried to provide the best answers I could, but I realized maybe even more valuable than that would be summing everything up in about five tips, then putting them together here in a YouTube video as well as a podcast. And understand that, yeah, I've been doing this job for about 20 years, more than half my life, but that it has changed so dramatically in the last 10 years alone, it's actually hard to keep up with the times. There's the old way of traditional television, radio, and print, and now there's all these new methods, live streaming, as well as social platforms, and somewhere in between, everybody's trying to get from old to new and do a little bit of both at the same time, including myself. Um, the af- actual jobs that people have, they've changed dramatically. And things will continue to evolve for better and sometimes for worse. But the five tips I'm, I'm going to present you with here, I truly believe, will stand the test of time. So number one, it's all about your first job. I got this question a lot. What should you shoot for in your first job? And my tip here is you're looking for repetition and diversity. And let me tackle each one of those separately. Repetition in a sense of doing the thing that you want to do over and over and over. It's going to give you the opportunity to make mistakes. It's going to give you the opportunity to feel comfortable about yourself and feel uncomfortable about yourself. It's also going to give you a lot more material to produce that you can then go back on and be critical of. That's how you get better. You watch the game tape just like an actual athlete. And then last but not least, with repetition, it's going to help you figure out how much you actually love this job or maybe if it's time to move on to something else. Burnout is real. You can easily get burnt out with a high volume of repetition. But a lot of people, they do this job, they get into it, they can't get enough of it, and that is when the passion is created and formed, and that is usually what can last an entire career. The diversity side of your first job, it's not just that you want to do what you want to do, but you also want to have the ability to watch other people around you, your colleagues, do their job, learn what they do, how they do it best. This is going to help you in a number of ways. Number one, you're instantly more valuable as an employee. You're also a better teammate because your coworkers are going to appreciate your care and concern for the the overall team effort and how they're helping you out whether they're an editor, a producer, whether they're the host uh, or reporter of a program, just to learn everybody else's job and how the bigger picture looks, I guarantee you is is going to work out for you best. And, and that brings me to my last point. In the long term, it's going to make you way more indispensable for your company now and in the future. If you can learn other jobs, if you can do multiple jobs, uh, really is going to enhance your value. All right, second tip here is I would advise you to always follow the golden rule. Now, the golden rule I have in covering sports is that I would never tweet it, I would never post it, I would never print it, I would never publish it unless I would also say what I'm going to say, whatever it is, to people in front of their faces. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, when you get into this business, I mean, your platform may not be the biggest at first. The the audience may not be the biggest you'll ever see. But don't misunderstand this. People are always watching the material that you put out, especially in 2020 where videos and articles and social media, it can also easily be shared from person to person. Athletes, families, coaches, uh, front office executives, they're all watching the material that you put out there now more than ever. And it's not that you can't be critical. You're talking about sports. There's going to be people who succeed and people who struggle. You can't ignore either one of those groups, but it's just that you don't want to confuse critical with taking it personal and making it personal, right? You never want to make it personal when you're talking about sports. So you have to pretend that everybody is watching everything you do every single time. And I really do think that will go a long way for your longevity, um, as opposed to being somebody who doesn't care about the ramifications of what you say and trying to fire off as many hot takes as you can. Tip number three is always save your work. I know that sounds crazy, but 
your material is like your gold because it's going to help you see your trajectory and realize your trajectory over one to three to five years. You should go back and look on your prior work and cringe a little bit because that means improvement is happening. That is how you see the strides and the steps that you've been taking. Also saving your work, whether it's in uh, print form, whether it's an audio clip, whether it's digital media, on a, you know, video, saving your work is going to help you showcase yourself to a potential next employer and taking that next step in your career. All right, tip number four is to lean on others, but don't forget to define yourself. I truly think when you're getting into this business, the best thing you can have is a group of people who also do a similar job that you want to do, people you admire, people you respect, people you look up to. You don't exactly want to be a carbon copy of any one of these individuals, but what you really want to do is take a little bit from one person, take a little bit from the other person, put all of that together and make it your own. Make that who you turn out to be. And at the same time, you're trying to be like others. You're trying to impart what they do into your own arsenal, but you also kind of have to create your own personality. And I hate to say brand. I really hate the terminology of your personal brand. But what you're ultimately trying to do is figure out who you are, your identity as a professional so that people know what to turn to you for, right? That's definitely going to enhance your career is to establish yourself with certain characteristics. And I'm going to leave that wide open. You're going to have to pick and figure out what those characteristics are, but to find, find a nice little spot that people can come to you for is definitely going to help you, you progress your career. And then last but not least, tip number five, it's probably the most important, is social presence. Now, there's two aspects of this. Your, your personal presence is totally up to you, and it really relies on how much of you do you want to share. You're going to have to weigh those options here in 2020. But the professional presence of you doing your job out in the public sphere, that's basically a mandatory thing here in 2020. And no, I don't think it's fair that follower counts and metrics and all the numbers that we can, we can see and judge by, by how much impact does somebody have on social media, I don't think that's fair that somebody should be judged on how successful they are on social platforms. But Quite honestly, it's true. That's what companies are looking for. They're looking for people that can help, you know, get the product across to viewers and ultimately to an audience. You're trying to generate reach. It's the most simple way to put it. And if you think about it, that has always been the end goal. Even in the earliest traditional days of television, how can we get the most ratings? How can we get the most people to watch? So you're trying to do that now and trying to cultivate new avenues on these social platforms. I highly encourage you to already start right now, even if you're not in the business, is to create and start developing your social platform. So that does it. I'm going to conclude with this thought, whether you turn out to be a host, a reporter, a journalist, by the way, I think those are all very different things. These tips can help you out no matter what path you take. And yeah, we can talk about those, those different definitions of job titles in another podcast and another video. But um, for right now, if you're doing broadcasting of any type, mass media of any type, I really do think those five things can help you out.